mission. Here we are yet again. What the flip is popping? How are we doing? How are we feeling? You guys, <laughs> Super Bowl weekend was such a flop. It was such a flop. Like literally, what the hell was that? It has taken me two weeks to recover from that monstrosity of a weekend. I was talking to my therapist about it and I was like, Tammy, every single thing went wrong. Every single thing went wrong. And she was like, oh my God, that's like, that's like a classic case of Murphy's Law. And I was like, what the hell is that? And she was like, that means that anything that could go wrong went wrong and it did. It sounds like that you experienced hell. And I was like, yeah. Honestly, that weekend in Vegas was hell. The energy was so dark. I don't know if it was just me and Caitlyn. Actually, no, it wasn't. I'll get into it. I don't know what people were on. It was so ridiculous. Ugh, I just wanna talk. This isn't the cruise vlog. Not yet. That will be the next one, I promise. But before we get started, we do have a sponsor, so take it away, Sarah. Thank you, BetterHelp, for sponsoring today's video. In the past, I always was like, I don't need therapy. I don't need it. I have a family full of therapists. I would always just go to them if I needed any help or like needed any advice. And I always thought like, my life is going pretty well. Like I don't have issues. But then I got older and then I realized that yeah, I have a lot of deep seated stuff in my subconscious that is like actually affecting my everyday life. It wasn't until recently where I actually sought out a therapist to like get a different perspective besides talking to my family, even though my family did help me. And I thought that I could just go to them. They're a great support system, but like it's really nice talking to somebody that has no perspective on your life. And that's just getting like a fresh point of view of who you are. Cause although my family did help me. They've known me since I was a baby. So like their opinion was just like a little bias. But yeah, ever since I've been talking to my new therapist, it's just been such a great breath of fresh air. It's really nice to be able to talk to somebody every week who you're building this relationship with and who's really like asking you the right questions and digging deep. It's been very eye-opening. I always leave my sessions just learning another new thing about myself and having some more tools to navigate my everyday life. And that's why I'm happy to talk about BetterHelp. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and give you helpful unbiased advice and first you go to their website and then you answer a few questions and better help will match you with a professional who has years of experience helping people with struggles just like yours you can do it all from your phone or computer via phone call video chat or messaging however you feel most comfortable and it's the easiest possible way to start talking to a therapist and you'll be matched with a therapist usually within 48 hours so you can get started fast just like that, baby. And also, if you're not getting along with your therapist, if you're not vibing with them, which is very common, it took me a very long time to find my girl. You can easily switch to a new therapist with no additional cost. You don't have to worry about insurance or who's in your network or anything like that. So if you're struggling or just need someone to talk to, consider online therapy with BetterHelp. You can scroll down, click the link in my description, or go to betterhelp.com slash sarabaska. And by clicking that link, you'll be supporting my channel directly and you'll also get 10% off of your first month with BetterHelp. So you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. Thank you so much BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video and let's get into it. I don't even know how to begin this situation. This is so embarrassing. Oh, by the way, my hair's darker. Do you guys like it? It was a lot darker when I first did it, but after a few washes, can you even tell? I don't know, I love it. Before I went to Vegas, I was so excited. And I filmed that video, my last video, where I bought so much <laughs> Chiefs merch. I bought underwear, you saw, I bought thongs. I bought bra, like what the fuck was that? I was just really excited to finally care about a team in the Super Bowl. And the fact that it was in Vegas was even better. Like this is gonna be the best weekend of my life, okay? And my expectations were through the roof. Just, I just wanna have fun, okay? That's my thing. Thing. I was put on this planet to have a good time. And so that's always the goal. I just want to be giggling and smiling and running around and dancing and popping my ass. <laughs> so if that's not happening, I'm upset. No, but I don't know if it's the new medication that I'm taking. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, wow, I actually uh, feel joy. I actually um, don't feel dread. What? 
it's just because, ugh, the Super Bowl in Vegas, the Chiefs, let's go. My hair looked really bomb. I was feeling really confident. We had our fucking itinerary figured out and we were also going with a brand. And so the brand hooked it up for us and put us into a hotel. It was just lit, like everything was working out. We were gonna see Kendrick Lamar the first night. Like we were hyped. So we get there. So we were staying at the Cosmo, the Cosmopolitan. I'm not even kidding. When we walked into the Cosmopolitan, I felt this really strange energy. I don't know where it came from, but it was right when I walked in. Everything was normal, but like, I just got this really uncomfortable feeling. But then I was like, no, Sarah, you're just being paranoid. Like, what are you talking about? So, <sighs> We get in line at the Cosmo, and as we're checking into our room, my phone beep boop beep boop, beep 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 boop boop, and I'm like, oh, who texted me? <laughs> um, mm. so there's this guy that I hooked up with like a year ago. Let's call him. Brandon. I'm just gonna fucking say Brandon. Maybe I've said Brandon in the past. I don't know. Okay, so I hooked up with this guy named Brandon like a year ago and he was cool. He was cool. It was honestly just like a one night stand. I met him at a club or like a bar and we hit it off. He was awesome. Like we talked the whole night, he made me laugh. I'm the type of person where I don't bring people back to my house ever, especially if I don't know you. It's not in my spirit, that doesn't sit right with me. But there was just something about Brandon where I was like, I trust you, like I'm having fun, you're hot, yeah. It's fine. He comes back to my place, we hook up, he leaves the next day. But during our deep conversation, he's a lot older than, not a lot older than me, but like he's older than me. We're just kind of in different places in our lives. He was cool, but like, I just, I just, for me, I was like, that was so like hee hee fun, see ya. But for him, I think that he like actually had a crush on me after that experience. Um. So I was a little flustered, I didn't know what to do because he was cool, but I wanna keep things light. And he was just like kind of intense because he wants different things right now and I just was not on that wavelength. No. And also I went to his Instagram and this was like another thing. Oh, this really made me sad. Cause I sat with myself and I was like, okay, Sarah, maybe it's just you. Like you're being avoidant. What are you running from? What is it actually about this dude? Because with other guys that I've liked, like I don't really hesitate. I'm just like, yeah, I like you. Let's figure this out. But there was something about him that I just like couldn't figure out. And I know exactly what it was. On Instagram, I went to his following list and he followed just like all OnlyFans bitches. Not, you know what I mean? Like OnlyFans girls, they're not bitches. OnlyFans girls, just like naked bitches. Like honestly, and it just went on forever. And I was like, okay, maybe it'll stop soon. No, it didn't. It just kept going. And like, for me, that was just kind of like a, ugh. Like no offense to those girls, like duh, they're hot, they're baddies. Oh, your entire following list being that, it was just, ugh. As a woman, you kind of have to do your research and look for red flags because men these days just kind of suck. And I don't know, that just like really icked me out. Like, do you not have any other interests? That's what it says to me. It's like, do you not? Want to look at anything else? Is all you think about sex? Like, do you have any other hobbies other than fucking? And it just turned me off. Also, I was like, I'm never gonna see this dude again. So like, it was pretty easy for me to kind of like, not think about him ever again, which sounds terrible, but like, Whatever, I'm moving on. He has been constantly responding to my stories just whenever I post anything and I don't respond. I see them and I'm like, oh, Brandon. And he's always like saying like nice things when he responds. It's never crossing a boundary or like out of control. Cause if it was, I would block him cause you're insane. But like, I don't know. I was just always kind of like, huh, Brandon replied to my story again. Didn't really think anything of it. But then also whenever I would post that I'm somewhere, for example, like a concert, he would always respond and be like, oh my God, I'm working that concert. Maybe I'll see you. Like he was just always, always where I was. 
but I never would respond because I'm like, I don't, uh, I just don't care, Brandon. But then when I was at the Cosmo checking into my hotel, Brandon texted me because I posted on my story like 20 minutes ago, a picture of the Las Vegas Strip, like right when I touched down into Vegas. I was like, here we fucking go. And then he responded to that story and um, yeah, he was like, oh my God, I'm also in Vegas. I'm at the Cosmo. I was at the Cosmo. I was standing in the middle of the Cosmo and I got this like really weird chill just over my body and I was like, oh my God, he can see me. He's look like, where is Brandon? Like I got kind of scared. I was like, what the fuck? And Caitlin was like, why are you being weird? Cause I was just standing there at the front desk, just like looking around. She's like, what's going on? And I was like, fucking Brandon. And I showed Caitlin, she was like, no. And I was like, yep. Brandon is not only in Vegas, but he's in the fucking Cosmo right now, just somewhere. And I have been avoiding this dude for a year. Just knowing that Brandon's presence was looming was a very unsettling vibe to start off my Vegas journey. And this is all gonna tie in together, don't worry. I'm not just like randomly saying this. So I was just constantly walking around the Cosmopolitan just like looking everywhere, just like scanning the entire place. Because if Brandon were to come up to me in that moment, what the fuck would I say? Yeah, so that night we got ready. We saw Kendrick Lamar, that was really sick. That was such a highlight of the trip, honestly. There was only like maybe three things that went correct. That went correct, okay? And then the second night we went to one of our friend's shows. Our friend was just performing at a random club. So me and Caitlin show up there. We're really excited to be there. Like all of our friends are here. But then our friends on stage were like giving like a really weird energy. And we were kind of like, what's going on with them? Whatever. Apparently they like thought that they had a really bad set that night or their performance was like off or something, but we didn't we didn't notice that at all. We thought it was good. They're just always good. They were just kind of in a mood because of that. And then we went to our friend's hotel room after that, just to like hang out with everybody, just like a little hotel room party. And everybody was just in an awful mood. It was so bizarre. Like me and Caitlin were so excited to be there. We're like, guys, we're in Vegas. We're all together again. The Super Bowl is on Sunday. Like, let's fucking go. And at this point it was Friday night and dude, everyone was just not okay. Our one friend was literally sitting in the corner like this with his head down like this. And he was the DJ. So he was, he was playing all the music on the speaker and he was just playing sad music, like breakup music. And just literally just sitting there, just singing in the corner. And I'm like, and then one of our other friends, oh my God, I was so fucking pissed. One of our other friends, who's like one of my dear friends, like we are so close. He was so fucked up that he forgot my name. Oh, I was so offended. I was so mad. I was so mad. Oh, I think we were talking about something that one of us posted on Instagram or something that I posted on Instagram or like something on my story. He goes to get out his phone to type in my Instagram and he couldn't remember my name. And I was like, bruh, I thought he was kidding. And he was like laughing like he was. And I was like, okay then put my name in if you're kidding. And he couldn't fucking remember my name. I have been friends with this man for years. He was just so fucked up. Like he was so drunk. Everybody was so drunk. And me and Caitlin were not that drunk. I was just kind of seeing everything for what it was. Cause I was probably the most sober one there. And one of my best friends forgets my name. I was so pissed. My other friend is just crying in the corner, listening to sad music with his head on the ground. My other friend's grandma just died allegedly so he's not talking to anybody and then our other friend over here isn't talking to us all night and like being really fucking weird and everybody was just being so fucking weird and me and caitlin were like what the fuck 
is wrong with you all? And we were all gonna go to a club after, like we just went to that hotel room to pregame. And the fact that everyone is just in different corners, like crying and like forgetting my name. Someone's falling over, someone's like being weird and not talking to us. Me and Caitlin were like, this, this can't be it. This can't be the end for us. Me and Caitlin wanted to leave so bad and go to Shaq's fun house. Cause that's actually fun. There were so many times where we were gonna leave and do that, but then we would just get trapped in these conversations, like these deep conversations where like people were really needing to talk. Like everybody was just going through it. Listen, I'm here. I'm here for people to talk to. Like, I will always be a shoulder people can cry on. But I was just not expecting my Saturday night to be like a group therapy session in Vegas. Like, literally right out the window was the Vegas sphere. And it was popping. Like, it was projecting all these like really fun graphics on the sphere. Everybody on Instagram is just like partying. And I'm just like, oh my God, my friends are not okay. I was just so confused. I'm like, what is going on? Like the vibration was just, it was crazy. Like everybody was going through some dark shit, but like in different ways, it was crazy. So me and Caitlin just decided to go home on Saturday. No, 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 that was Friday. Okay, that was Friday night. Then Saturday, we were like, okay, we're going to turn this shit around. We're gonna have a really great night tonight. Okay, I don't care what it takes. So as we're fucking getting ready, Caitlin gets a text that her friend is about to die? What? Huh? What? Crazy, so sad. Her friend got in an accident and was like in the hospital and it was looking really bad. And Caitlin got that news on Saturday. Me and her just looked at each other. We we're like, there's no way. Like what the hell is going on? Now this morning, Caitlin gets this really tragic news. Like it was crazy. Caitlin's kind of spent all day just like talking to different people on the phone and just like trying to get more information about her friend. And like, I didn't know how to be there for her in that moment. I was trying my best, not wanting to like push her to do anything. I was like, we don't have to go out or do anything. This is a lot. Like it was very traumatic information that she received. I was totally okay with just not doing anything and just kind of staying back, but she wanted to distract herself because there was just so much terrible news coming onto her phone like every five minutes from different people, like just updates about the situation. So she just really wanted to get out of the hotel room and do something. So we were like, okay. So that information looming over our spirit, obviously we're not at 100. Like obviously we're like not in the best mood. We're like anxious, concerned. Our head is somewhere else, right? But so is all of our friends' heads. So like everybody is just like, not okay. And we meet up with a few of our friends and you guys, Vegas was so chaotic. Just in general, there were so many people. I mean, obviously it's the Super Bowl. It was so crowded everywhere. All of the bars and the casinos, it was impossible to get a drink anywhere. Like it was so crowded. We were just walking around the casino, just like trying to get a drink. As we were walking, to this bar, Caitlin looks at me and she was like, Sarah, I'm going to throw up. And we haven't even drank anything yet. So I was like, what? And I thought it was because she got more news about her friend. And so I was like, oh my God, are you okay? What happened? And she was like, I just have a feeling I'm going to run into Daniel. And Daniel was her ex situationships best friend from like years ago who she hasn't seen in a while. So I was kind of like, girl, what? Like you're not gonna run into, like you're fine. There's so many people, like we're in this casino. We're like sardines, like you're not gonna see Daniel. That's, first of all, that's so random. And she was like, no, Sarah, like I, I don't know why. I just had like a weird vision of Daniel and I just, I just got like full body chills. Like I'm like, my heart is racing. Like I'm going to see Daniel. And I was like, you're tripping take some deep breaths. Like she was like shaking. It was crazy. I have never seen her like this. In my head, I was like, okay, I think that she's just very on edge about the news that she received from earlier, which is very valid. And you guys, 
not kidding. Three minutes later, we saw on our phones like how much time went by. Three minutes later, we went around the corner in this casino and she sees Daniel standing there in a group. She didn't even know that Daniel was gonna be there. He didn't even post anything on his story. Like, I swear, Caitlyn has some witchy powers because this happens all the time. I think she has some psychic powers genuinely because the way that her body fully reacted in that moment, she just kept saying, I'm going to see Daniel. And then we saw Daniel three minutes later. The fact that she just predicted that made her spiral even more. Cause she was like, oh my God, there's no way that I'm actually looking at Daniel right now. And you just saw that. And I was like, yeah, like I can attest to that. Like it was crazy. I have never experienced someone actually like predict something in real time. And I was like shaky for her. I was like, what the fuck? They made eye contact. So they had to say hello, you know? And so I was kind of standing around while they were talking and Caitlin was so anxious while talking to this dude who she knows very well, but like she's just freaking out over the fact that she just predicted that. And after that conversation, like Caitlin was not okay. She was like, Sarah, I'm like about to have a panic attack. I don't know what to do with myself. That was so scary. I think that I'm psychic. Like that was the scariest thing I've ever experienced. I was like, totally, let's like dive into that later. Then after that, we, we just like didn't know what to do with ourselves. Nobody knew what they wanted to do. Some people wanted to go to a club. Some people didn't. Some people wanted to go to sleep and everybody was just anxious or sad or overwhelmed or stressed out. Like nope. Everybody was just vibing. Me and my friend Dan were the only ones that were just like, what's going on? And now Caitlyn, not okay. And then finally me, Dan, Caitlyn, and our other friend were just like, let's just go to this new club. We went to this club called Live. We get there and it was chill, but it wasn't like, crazy. I can't remember who was performing. God, that's really sad actually that I don't even remember who was performing, but it was, it was an EDM artist. I just remember sitting there just being like Saturday night, like what the hell? Everybody was just acting weird. Caitlin was also trying to have fun. She was having as most fun as she was able to have with all of the information that she received today. Like, and the DJ wasn't that good. And then after that, everybody was tired and not in a good mood. So then we went to bed and I was like, what? There's no way. And I was like, okay, well tomorrow, tomorrow is Super Bowl Sunday. This is why I'm here. I am here for Kansas City and Travis Kelsey. This is the only actual day that matters to me. All of these other days, whatever, they were just fluff, okay? I'm here to watch the fucking football game. So one of our friends was super nice and invited me and Caitlin to this party. This party was going to be insane. It was gonna be a Super Bowl watch party. It was going to be fucking crazy. I'm not gonna name drop, but it was someone very insane's party. And me and Caitlin could not even believe that we were invited to this shit, okay? And we were so excited. You know, things have been going to shit, but at least we're going to this party today, you know? So the kickoff was at 3.30. We were obligated to go to this other event with the brand that we were sent with. There was an event at like noon that we had to go to and just, you know, be there and take pictures and stuff. So we were getting ready to go to that. And the event that we're getting ready to go to was Guy Fieri's tailgate party, okay? So we're stoked. We're like, okay, this is gonna be great. We get ready, we hit up the brand lady. One of the executives is gonna meet you in the lobby and then you three are going to get in a Sprinter van and we're like, lit, let's do it. So we meet up with this lady, let's call her Kathy, okay? Kathy was so nice. We get into this Sprinter van, we're like, oh my God, I can't believe we're going to Guy Fieri's tailgate. This is so random, what the hell? And we're like in pretty good spirits. We're making small talk with Kathy. It was only the three of us in this van. All of a sudden I'm talking to Kathy. I noticed that Caitlin's a little quiet next to me. I'm just like, whatever, still talking to Kathy, just chatting it up. And I'm not kidding you guys. We were like a minute and a half away from the event. Caitlin is just quiet as a mouse. And so I just kind of look over at Caitlin and I'm like, hey, are you good? And like her face is white and she's looking at her phone. She's like shaking. 
And I was like, oh my God, what's going on? What happened? And she just showed me her phone and she got notified that her friend passed away. What? And then she just starts crying, of course. Kathy, God bless her, was very confused. She didn't really know what was going on. Caitlin was crying and couldn't really speak. So I was like, hi, I'm so sorry. Like she, her friend has been in the hospital and like we just got news that they passed away and Kathy was like, oh my God. And then Caitlin was like, I don't think that I can go to this right now. And I was like, totally. And Kathy was like, totally. And Kathy was like, driver, let's turn this bus around. It was just the saddest shit ever, you guys. Like, oh my God, I felt so terrible for Caitlin. I didn't know her friend. Um, I've never met him, but from what she's told me about him, he was just the sweetest kid ever. This was just such like a freak accident and just so random and like, just so jarring. There was just like a lot of anger about the situation because it was so random and just so unnecessary like it was just a very unnecessary way to lose your life. It was really hard. What do you mean someone died? Like, what are you talking about? This weekend was just so dark. We got to the hotel room and Kaylin was just crying and just kind of like grieving and like calling people and stuff. And I didn't really know what to do. I was like, are we going to this party that we were supposed to go to? Because like in my head, I was like, I don't, I don't want to. And I'm so okay with not doing that. Like, oh my God, if Caitlin doesn't want to do that, I'm so okay with not doing that. That seems almost inappropriate to do that right now. Um, so I just didn't say anything. I just kind of laid in the hotel bed and just sat with her and stuff. After maybe like an hour, I was like, do you even want to watch the football game? Like we don't have to. If you do, we can just watch it here in the hotel room. And she was like, no, let's just get ready. I think that we should go to that party anyway. Like we're here. You know, like I really just need to get my mind off of this right now. I just really want a distraction. And I was like, totally girl, like whatever you want to do. Like my job that day and that weekend was to just be there for her because I just can't even imagine how she's feeling right now. Like what do you even do in that situation? What I want to do doesn't matter. Whatever Caitlin wants to do, whatever she's comfortable and whatever she's up to, I'm okay with whatever. We can even go home, bitch. Like get a plane ticket and just go home. I literally don't care. So we just started getting ready for the football game. And then we're on our way to the hotel where we're supposed to meet our friend. We text our friend like, hey, we're here. And kickoff is in 10 minutes and he's not responding. And me and Caitlin are like, what the fuck? Why isn't he responding? This is insane. We're sitting at the slot machines, but there's a restaurant right in front of us with a bunch of TVs. So we could like see the game and we saw the kickoff. Our friend is still not texting us back. Do we just stay here and watch the game? After like 30 minutes of just sitting there, Caitlin is like about to cry because the only way that she would actually enjoy herself right now is if we went to this ridiculous party where we honestly have no business business being at, but just the fact that we were like invited to it and our friend knows the person, like that was the only thing that could snap us out of this funk that we were in. But our friend was just not responding to us. Why is he being so inconsiderate? Why is he just not communicating? It's just so rude. Our other friend, let's call her Melissa. Melissa hits us up and was like, oh my God, do you guys like want to go watch the game at this random bar? So we are like, okay, let's just do that. Honestly, let's just get the fuck out of here. He's not going to respond anyway. It's just not going to happen. So we go to this random bar. We take an Uber with our friend Melissa and Melissa's friend and we get to the bar and it's fucking crowded. It was like a sports bar vibe, you know? So there's a bunch of TVs everywhere, like projectors and shit. And it was so crowded and there were no seats. My feet, my feet. My feet were throbbing because I had to stand. <laughs> I had to stand up the entire time. And I was wearing heels. Why was I wearing heels? Because we were going out right after. My feet were fucking throbbing. But guys, it's okay. Because the Chiefs were kind of winning towards the end. But like the first three quarters, I was anxious, depressed, 
and uncomfortable. I was anxious because I'm like, wow, I just spent so much fucking money <laughs> on all this cheap shit and they're losing. So I was really anxious the entire time watching the game. Didn't feel good whatsoever watching the game. Just constantly stressed out, depressed because Caitlyn, her friend just died. What the hell do I do about that? And just, I'm wearing the worst shoes possible. We ended up leaving at the fourth quarter. Like once the fourth quarter started, my feet were on fire. I wanted to sit down somewhere. Everybody else wanted to go back to the casino. We get to the casino. We find a seat to watch the end of the game. It goes into overtime. Everyone's stressed the fuck out. The tension in the casino is just electric, bitch. Everybody is so divided. There's so many people that are there for the 49ers. So many people are there for Kansas City. It's neck and neck in overtime. And then we won in the last five seconds of overtime. And I freaked the hell out. I felt like a kid on Christmas, bitch. I was jumping around like the little Easter bunny. I felt like I just got like electrocuted. And I was like, this is how people feel watching sports. <laughs> like, wow, I get it. I get it. Like, thank fucking God that happened. That was the only good thing that happened. Um, so after the game was over, me and Caitlin were obviously stoked that Kansas City won, but it was just such a very strange energy in Vegas. Like all the 49ers fans were so fucking pissed. I was wearing my really cool Chiefs jacket that I had custom made. Eh, I'm crazy and silly. But every single time we would walk by a group of 49ers men and they had like 49ers shit on, they would just spew the nastiest, most derogatory shit at us. And it was really annoying too, because like I said, the casinos were jam packed with people, just sardine city. We were trying to celebrate us finally having something good happen to us, but then these fucking men would just piss us off all over again. And it would be like their hot breath in my ear. Ugh, and there's nothing I can do about it. Like there's nowhere I could go. Why can't people be nice? and not creepy and not crazy. You're just mad, obviously. Like these bitches are just mad that they lost. That's okay. But I'm just a girl. Like I'm just a girl wearing a chief's jacket. I had no control. Stop being mean to me and stop being mean to my friend because she's not doing the best. Don't be fucking crazy. You can talk some shit. You can say some shit. Fuck chiefs. That wasn't fair. Fuck Travis Kelsey. That's fine. Just don't be inappropriate. <laughs> Anyway, and then we get back to our hotel room. Caitlin is very upset, rightfully so. Her friend died. And also one of her really good friends completely blew us off this weekend. Knew what Caitlin was going through, like knew Caitlin was not doing well right now and like completely just blew her off. She just felt very disrespected. It was just so chaotic too, because like since we were in Vegas, everybody was fucked up. Everybody was drunk as fuck all day. Not Saying that that's an excuse to be disrespectful, but it was just like everybody was hammered and like barely on their phones and just running around and like acting like chickens with their heads cut off. We couldn't get a hold of anybody. It was just, oh God. Me and Caitlin are in spaces where there's like a lot of like famous people around. It's really hard not to feel insecure in some of these spaces that we're in. Some of the people that are there are just fucking ridiculous. Like the party that we were going to go to. And it is really hard to like, 
like feel like we belong there <laughs> sometimes just because it's like what are we doing here and a huge reason is because since we're influencers a lot of people don't take us seriously like people think that we're a joke a lot of the times when we're in these spaces so we just we just feel so weird sometimes you know so i've been working a lot in therapy this might sound kind of cheesy but just like working a lot in therapy of just growing my self-confidence when i am in these spaces and like kind of learning and realizing that i am meant to be here and that people do want me here i'm not an inconvenience i'm not like an annoyance it's been like a lot of deep rooted work i feel like this weekend like triggered every fucking thing that i've been working through it's not even that we were upset that we couldn't go to these like cool parties it was just the fact of we felt like we weren't good enough to be in certain spaces even though that's not the case we just felt really insecure in that because our friends would like invite us to places but then like just ghost us and so we were just so in our heads being like why can't they just say that like they can't get us into the party it's fine and that makes sense if they can't like it's probably insane to get into this party anyway totally okay that we can't go just let us know so we like know and that we can do something else nobody was communicating anything and so it just made us really insecure and like we were just really in our heads being like do they even want us anywhere what the fuck is going on everybody was just completely in different places and nobody was just being honest well obviously caitlin's friend dying was the absolute breaking point but just that happening right on top of it of our friend just like not communicating with us all day about like anything it just felt like we were just getting like punched to the ground so caitlin was just like really emotional after the football game i was like okay well we can do whatever you want we can stay in order room service like what do you want to do okay i actually have something to say about this part because i need you guys to understand how much of a singular thread Sarah and I were hanging on by at this point. Like we had been trying so hard to have fun this whole weekend because we had been looking forward to this weekend for over a year. And despite all of the things going wrong that weekend, all of the horrible news I had been receiving left and right, I just wanted so badly to have just a moment of fun. We didn't really have fun the days leading up to the Super Bowl. We didn't really have that much fun during the Super Bowl. So I was like, please, for the love of God, can something work out after the Super Bowl? Like, can we just have one really awesome fun time, please? So all of a sudden, as I'm like hanging on by a thread, I get put in a group chat by these two men that I love. They are near and dear to my heart and they are so nice and so awesome. Sarah loves them too. They just randomly put me in a group chat. I didn't even know that they were in Vegas this weekend. I don't know how I didn't see them, but they just put me in a group chat and they're like, hey, who are you in Vegas with? I told them Sarah. They were like, awesome great why don't you guys come meet us at this new club and hang out with us and I was just like I'm not gonna hold my breath yet. I'm not gonna get ahead of myself because so many of our other plans have already been ruined. But then the unthinkable happened. I was given a time and place to meet them two hours in advance. So I was like, Sarah, get the hell up. We are going to have one fun time. It's going to happen. Those guys are the best. And that is the energy that I need so badly. Like, oh my God, these guys are so correct for just randomly showing up in Vegas and throwing me in a group chat with them. Like their energy is just so good. I need it. Like I need it so bad. I want one positive experience here desperately. So let's just try and go or I'm going to lose it. I'm going to lose it. I already have, but like, <laughs> we can't give up even though I had been given a million reasons to. If something goes wrong again, like it's just fucking funny. So we show up, we get in and it was a great fucking night. This guy whose club that we were at, he's a very fun time and we had a fun time. So much fun. And everybody that was there was so fun. Besides, oh my God. I was really sad about this one interaction that I had that night. <laughs> There's this woman, she's a music artist. I've really fucked with her music. Ugh, I've really liked her music. I don't think you guys would guess who it is. 
ever. And so when I saw that she was at this club, I was like, oh, hell yeah. And she was in our section. So it was just cool kind of coexisting in her space. As the night went on, I was kind of talking to her friends and her friends were really fucking dope. And they were just really fun. And we were all just dancing together, just shaking our ass, just popping it on the dance floor. Like I had so much fun with this person's friends, but this person was just kind of sitting on the side talking to the owner of the club the whole time. And they were just kind of off to the side having a really deep talk. So I was like, okay, whatever, totally. But I was just dancing with her friends on the dance floor. I was like, let's go, you guys are lit. And then we were gonna leave the club. So then the music artist was sitting at a seat and then one of the girls was sitting next to her that I really fucked with. And then this dude was on the other side of the music artist that I really fucked with too. I was like, okay, well I'm leaving. So I'm gonna say goodbye to the two people that I've been fucking with all night. I didn't talk to the music artist at all. I went up to the girl that I was fucking with and I was like, it was so nice to meet you. I had so much fun. She was like, yeah, that was so much fun. Love you. And I was like, totally. And then the dude on the other side of the music artist. So it was the girl that I just said goodbye to, the music artist. And then this dude, he reached over and he was like, are you leaving? And I was like, yeah, I'm leaving. He was like, oh my God, it was so great to meet you, blah, blah, blah. We like hug from across the thing. And I didn't want to be rude because I just said goodbye to this girl. I just said goodbye to this dude and this music artist was right in the middle of them. So I didn't wanna just like ignore her. So I I was like, fuck, I like have to say something, but do I like pretend that I don't know her? I don't want her to be like weirded out by me. Cause I definitely fuck with her a lot, but like, I don't know what to do right now. So I was really trying to tap into my social cues. <laughs> And I was like, okay, I'm just gonna just ask her what her name was and just introduce myself and just pretend like I didn't know her. So I was just like, hey, like, I'm so sorry. I don't think that I met you yet. What was your name? Like, just so, just nice, just nice. Ah, and she, ah, she literally leaned back, looked at me up and down and started laughing. She started laughing. I was so confused. I was like, I literally was like looking around. I was like, what's funny? What? The girl next to her, the one that I was fucking with, she like looks at me and then she like looks away. She's like, oh no. And I was like, what is happening right now? So the music artist is like laughing in my face. And I was like, sorry, I, I, did I say something? Like, I we didn't. I didn't introduce myself. And she goes, what's your name? And I was like, I'm Sarah. And I like go like this and ah! She literally laughs again. And she shakes my hand and she goes, I'm Stephanie. Her name wasn't Stephanie. Her name wasn't Stephanie. It wasn't. <clears throat> Her name was not Stephanie. And I knew that. And she was laughing again. And it's like, do I pretend like her name is Stephanie, even though I know that she's fucking with me? Or do I call her out? I was like, oh my God, what do I do right now? I've never been in this energy before. And like I was saying, you guys, like when I'm around people that are like in the industry and shit, I can't stand feeling like I am less than or like that I'm being disrespected because they don't know who I am. I don't fucking, I don't know. I literally don't know why she treated me like that. She was definitely just like, trying to be funny and make her friends laugh and say that her name was like Stephanie. But like, I know your name isn't Stephanie. Like I really fucked with her, which really pissed me off. So I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something. And so I was like, okay, I didn't want to be weird, but I know who you are. I know what your name is. I know your name isn't Stephanie. I just thought that that was like a chill way to introduce myself. I don't know. And then she literally was like, oh, Okay, well, yeah, nice to meet you. And I was like, what the, f what was that? And then she just like turned and started talking to someone. And I was like, 
What was that? I am so happy that I said something because I feel like if I just walked away and pretended like I didn't know who she was, she would have just kept laughing at me. But the fact that I like called her out and was like, why the fuck did you? Why would you? Like that was weird. That was weird, but I'm not gonna come at you with disrespect. I'm just gonna be like, hey, Jesus. Like, that's what I'm saying, y'all. We were getting that type of energy constantly, constantly. That sucked, but you know what? I'm just gonna give her the benefit of the doubt. Maybe she was just having a bad day. Other than that interaction, that night was really fun. Um, that was honestly probably one of the best nights of my life, which is crazy because all the other nights were terrible. And honestly, that day before the football game was fucking awful. But then Kansas City winning and then that club, it, it was just really fun. And Caitlin had a lot of fun. She got to distract herself. Um, Caitlin had a blast while we were at that club. Yeah, sure. But I forgot to mention that when we woke up the next morning, we discovered that somebody stole... <laughs> Caitlyn's cards and her identity and went on a shopping spree. Someone from that really lit ass club that we had the best night in. Of course, of course. They went to Perth Mobility, the Spring Valley Hospital, the gas station, McDonald's, and now Walmart. <laughs> that happened we can't just have one good night we couldn't just have one but then we got back to la and she literally deleted instagram she was like i literally need to go off the grid for like two weeks and i was like totally like it was just a lot yeah oh i didn't run into brandon at all thank god but y'all, oh my God, the other fucking night after Vegas, I went out a few nights ago and we went to this club. After we were done with the club, we went to this other club and another club and another club, bus, club, another, okay. But we went to this other club and then one of our homies met us and was like, oh, we're actually gonna go to this house party. It's right down the street. Just come walk with us. And we were like, okay. So we just walk with our friend down the street and we show up to this random house. It had some like really wacky decorations. And we were like, whose house is this? This is so random. We were like, let's go get a drink. And we go up to the bar because there, there was a bar in this house and there was a bartender. And it was this older guy, just like this old guy. I get my drink. I just ordered a beer. And then I go into the living room and I see Brandon standing there playing Pac-Man. I haven't seen this man in a year and I haven't talked to this man since he told me a few weeks ago that he was at the Cosmo, AKA the same hotel as me. And now I'm standing in the middle of a random living room and he's playing Pac-Man. What? I never thought that I would be face to face with him ever again. I guess my friend that took us to this party is a mutual because guess whose house we were at? We were at Brandon's uncle's house. What? Why is his uncle throwing house parties? I don't know, but apparently that's a thing. And apparently Brandon goes sometimes when he's bored and just sits in the corner and plays Pac-Man. What? Like, why was Brandon there? And why is that his uncle's party? And his uncle was the bartender who gave me the beer. And now I am face to face with Brandon, who I have been blowing off for a year. And um, we had a really good conversation. I will admit, he did call me out on some things, which was scary because like, oh my God. 
you're calling me out. And I knew that if I were ever face to face with him, he would call me out on some behaviors because I was very avoidant. I was not communicative. I just didn't really give him an explanation as to why I wasn't communicating or like following up. And I didn't realize that that hurt his feelings so much, you know, because we've only hung out one time and hooked up one time. So I didn't think that it was that deep, but because I just didn't think I would ever see him again, but then I did. So if you, if there's anything to learn from this video, I don't know if you learned one thing, but if you are gonna learn something, you're gonna see them again. Even when you don't think that you are, you're gonna see them again. You're gonna probably see them in a random living room at a random house party, and you're gonna be face to face with them. So, just be straight up, tell people how you feel, and just be honest. So yeah, um, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Yeah, the next video is gonna be from the cruise. I can't wait to show you guys that one. Hope you guys had a great February, and I'll see you guys in March. Happy St. Patty's. Love ya.